Hello and welcome to 6502 Assembly Language Programming on the Commodore 128. We're going to be continuing on with the WORM program and if this is the first video you've run across you can find the rest of them at my website at aaron.baher.biz right here in red or probably wherever you found this one. This should be nearby. Alright, so the last time we set up a head pointer and I did a separate video on um, double pointers which we're going to be using here um, let's see so sorry my phone just beeped for a second there and it's also my webcam so I said to make sure everything is still right so right here in the start section we set up head P and tail P those are our two pointers <clears throat> and we set them both to point at the beginning of our um, beginning of our pointer list, which starts at two, th starts at two thousand in hex. Um, let's see. I don't recall whether I ever set up tail adra. Apparently not. Okay. It's been over a week, so I have to stop. I have to think here. Just what all I did so far. Okay, so we set up the pointers, and then we get to place head, which I'm going to change the name of this. Um, this isn't called by anything anyway. It's just a label, so we can tell. Um, I'm going to call this start worm, because th this is going to do more than just start the head. It's going to start the head and tail and other counters. Okay, so so far this is set up the head now we're going to have it also set up the tail and also start our our counts for the length of the the length of the worm and this more body counter we'll get to that in a second so it takes it, it sets 600 as head adra which is the you know that's going to be where the head starts in screen memory and it also puts that in our pointer list using head p and so we just need to do the same thing with tail P because it's going to start out and the, the tail is going to start out in the same place. So I'm just going to duplicate this stuff. Okay, yeah, that's still good. And then load A. Okay, and then this just this just stores the actual character on the screen. Now the tail, at the beginning, the tail is going to be the head, and the head and the tail are going to be in the same position. So we're not we don't need to put a tail character on the screen, um, just the head character. So that's all. That should all be good right there. Now we also want to load that the length of the worm is currently one because it just has the one um, character so we're going to store that into um, what I guess I called it length and I want to store five into more body now more body is where it keeps track of if it needs to add more body characters to the worm which it'll do every time you run into a number that's your you guide your worm around the screen your every time you run into a number on the screen it's going to add that many more body characters to your worm so your worm keeps getting longer and longer it keeps getting harder to run, harder to avoid running into something that's the, the the concept of the game so what i want to do at the beginning this is partly for testing and partly just because i think it makes sense um is start out with more body equal to five so that when you start moving your worm your worm will get longer until it reaches a length of five so you're not just steering ahead around until you hit a number um, and that'll give us a chance right away to make sure that 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 stuff is working um, so right away it's as if it's as if you already ran into a five when you start that's basically how it's how it works so that's that's just setting up everything at the beginning we have our we have our head P and our tail P pointing to the first location in our pointer list and we also have 
head adger and tail adger pointing to their locations in screen memory and those locations or yeah actually in fact I don't have that didn't have to do actually didn't have to do any of this because or some, so well I didn't have to do some of this because at this point when we're starting the worm head P and tail P are pointing to the same thing so I don't need to actually put in these store A to where tail P is pointing we just need to make sure that head, tail adder is set up along with head adder okay so that should all be good so the next place this comes into effect then is down here in print head which again is probably may need to get its name changed because it's gonna have it's gonna do more than just print the head at this point. Um, so what this does, and down here at the bottom you see head P. What this does is it moves the head whichever direction it was told to move um, based on head adder here. Um, when print head is called, let's see, let's go find where it was called from. So printhead is called from these these little chunks that have that are deciding where to move it based on what key was pressed. And so once we actually get to printhead, then head address has already been changed based on your key press. And it's just this is just what this does is puts it puts the new head address in the pointer list. And that's what's going on right here. Increment head P and then possibly increment this. This is just moving the pointer up to the next pointer location. The moving Because head P is a double pointer and so it's pointing at a list of pointers and so it needs to move it needs to be incremented by two each time it um, each time it moves to the next pointer in the list. Okay so that's so we increment the we increment head P by two get it to the next spot and then we store let's see okay and then once we get down to so all this stuff right in here is just what the comment says move head to drop two bytes wrap around if necessary then once we've done that we load a from with head address store that into where head P is pointing so all this stuff is just a matter of adding to our list of um, adding to our list of pointers. So we've done that with head P and head adder. Now we need to figure out what do we need to do with tail P. Now tail P, the, the, the tail, meaning the last body character in the worm, sometimes needs to move or well sometimes needs to disappear, sometimes doesn't need to disappear. And that's going to be based on more body because if the worm, you know, say the worm is just moving along and doesn't need to grow anymore, then every time the head moves a character, you need to drop, you need to disappear the last tail character, or the, the tail character, I should say. Call the ones in the middle body characters, call the one on the end tail character. You need to disappear the tail character every time you move the head, the head one spot, okay? And on the other hand, if the worm is, if you've recently run into a number and the worm needs to be growing, then you don't want to disappear one, which means tail P needs to stay where it is. Um, so I think the first thing we want to do here, let's see. Yeah, so the first thing we want to do is check more body. Because if more body is zero, then we want to disappear the tail character, move tail P up to point to the next one in the body. If more body is more than zero, if it's anything but zero, then we just want to decrement more body to show that we've used one of it and leave tail P pointing where it is, don't disappear anything, and increment the length because the length will be getting one longer. Okay, so I think that covers. Um, see if I had that I might have talked about this 
or let's see, on a move. Da, 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 da. Okay, no, I didn't talk about this yet. So, check more body. Let's just write down what I, I should have been typing it up as we went, but check more body if zero then disappear last tail character and increment tail p if not zero decrement more body um, in increment length but we don't need to do anything to tail p because the tail is going to stay there while the head moves and makes the body longer so that's our that's our, this is our logic that we're about to implement right here all right so to in fact let's just let's just copy that over here so we have it to look at all right so the first thing we want to do then is load more body into a register. Any register will do, um, because we've yeah, because we don't have, we don't have anything particular stored in any registers right now. Um, so we want to load a with more body and then branch if not equal to zero ahead to some other code. All right. So right here is going to be the part, if it is equal to zero, which is this section right here. We need to do this stuff right here. Now I could switch that around. In fact, I think I will because I think this will be the simpler part. So let's branch if equal to zero, which means that right here, if it doesn't branch, will be the not equal to zero stuff, which will be right here. Okay. I think it's kind of backwards from where the way I would do it in another language. In another language, I would probably put more of the work. Well, that's not necessarily true. I guess it just depends. But if I'm in a branch, I like to have fewer things right after the branch rather than, um, well, for one thing, you can only branch 127 bytes, so you don't want to try to put too much stuff between your branch and the point you're branching to. So anyway, then we need to decrement more body and increment length and that is, should be all we need to do if more body is not equal to zero. We just want to reduce it by one and increase our, our length counter by one. Now if it was zero, then that's when we do the other stuff right up here. Let's get rid of what we did. So we need, now we need to disappear the last tail character, which means we need to replace it with a space. And we need to move the tail pointer up. All right, so to do that, um, I want to load A with space, I think I think that's what we called, uh, yes, that's what we called our empty space. I need to figure out how to get Emacs to stop indenting those like that. Um, load A with space and store it into, well, we're also going to need to load y with zero because anytime you do any in, anytime you do any index one of these index things, um, you've got to make sure y is zero, or otherwise it because it's going to index by y. So we want to um, do that. We want to store not a zero. We want to st yeah. We want to store the space into tail address index by zero. So we're just storing the space at the po at the location pointed to by tail address. So that deleted the tail character. Now we want to we want to move tail address up to the next location in the body. And to do that, we need to move up tail p to the next location in the list of pointers. Um, hopefully you've seen the video on the on the uh, double pointers or this will probably be really confusing but um, so what we're going to do is going to be really similar to what we did up here. We incremented head P twice and so we're just going to steal this. In fact I'll even steal the comment. Um, Move 
move tail P. We'll do a quick. Okay, so we've incremented tail P twice and then dealt with the possibility. We'll dealt with what happens if it wraps around the block or wraps around the end of our pointer space. And so now tail P is pointing to the next um, memory location up in the body. And then we can get, well, then we just need to copy that into tail adra. So we would load A from, let's see, we haven't changed Y yet. We'll load A from tail P, comma Y. We'll store that into tail adra increment y load a from tail p comma y store that into tail adra plus one okay now let me check back up here and make sure that looks similar um, yes it does it, it's it's sort of backwards from this up here simply because up here we created head adra first based on the movement of the head and then we copied that to to our pointer list where head p is pointing down here the address is already in the pointer list we're copying it from the pointer list to tail adra and so um let's make sure that y yeah y is still going to be zero here and so we're getting the low byte from the pointer list storing that into tail adra and then getting incrementing y so we get the high byte from the from the pointer list and storing that in the tail address. And so that should that should take care of that. Okay. Seems like there should be more to that, but I don't think there's going to be. So that means when we start moving the head, our worm should get longer until it's five, but then it should start staying five. It should start losing its tail as it moves along. Um, okay. I expected there to be a little more to that, but I can't think of what I'm missing, so let's just go ahead and try it. I blew the font up a little bit on all this stuff because I thought it might have been a little... Nobody's complained, but it just seemed kind of small to me in the videos. Um, unless you're downloading them and, um, you know, watching them on a, on a good-sized monitor, I thought they might be kind of small, so... Um, okay. So, if I start moving... Undeft statement error. Well, that's ugly. Uh, okay, so we've got a major problem. Um, let's try it one more time just to make sure that wasn't a fluke. Sometimes it's nice to know whether... Okay, same thing. An undef statement error, I think, is some kind of basic error, so there's something weird going on there. Um, all right. Oh, 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 oh. Um, this might be the issue. Right here, I branch if equal to zero. Well, let's see. But if it's not equal, then it's supposed to do these two things, but then go ahead and come down. It shouldn't do any of this other stuff. So, let's see. In that case... VI moment there. So basically we want to skip if it's if it's not equal to zero we want to do these two things but then skip all this stuff we did if it was equal to zero. 
So we really want to skip down here to PLARTS. So all we really need to do is just put them right here, PLARTS. So it's either going to do this stuff in return, or it's going to do this stuff in return. Okay. Let's try that. I'm not convinced that's actually the problem, but it is a problem. Um, I guess that was the problem. Um, okay, but our program broke when we got to a length of five, well, or a length of six, um, instead of continuing on. So we still got an issue. Um, <clears throat> it's saying we were in bank one for some reason. That's weird. I don't know why we'd have been in bank one. Um, Okay, so something's causing it to break out and to be in bank one for some reason when it breaks out. So let's um, let's see. Our, um, our head P and tail P and all that kind of stuff is in the B section of, um, of zero page. And I think it should be okay there. I don't think we should be conflicting with anything, but it's, it's always possible we are. Um, I do see one issue that I forgot length is a 16-bit value so we're gonna have to but that, that's not causing this that's um, but that is something we'll have to deal with um, I'll go ahead and store that into length plus one okay but that wasn't that wasn't the problem um, Well, let's start doing some debugging. Let's go ahead and load it. Let's reset. Okay. Let's look at B0 to BF. Let's just do that. All right. So B0... Um, look back here. B0 is tail adra. Um, head adra is up at FA. And I may want to move all these things into one, together in one place. You, you tend to use the FA, FC locations, um, just kind of out of habit, because those are always available. Um, but, uh, now I've got things spread out in a couple places couple places in zero page um, so head P is B6 tail P is B8 so let's see here's B4 here's B6 here's B8 so head P and tail P are both pointing correctly at 20 at two excuse me at 2000 um, we have the length at B2 and more body at B4. So here's the length is one, more body is five, and that all looks good. All right, so let's move once, okay, and then come back and check that again. All right, head pointer has moved to 2002, which is correct. Tail pointer has stayed put, which is correct. More body has been decremented to four. Length has been increased to two. 
and so that's that's working correctly. Um, tail pointer is still or tail address is still pointing at 6,000 and if we look at 2,000 we should see we see head adder there or sorry we see tail P still right there which is being pointed to by tail P um, yeah right right here here's tail P it's pointing to 2000 like I said in my video about double pointers you have to keep keep reminding yourself that tail P and head P don't point directly to the memory look don't point to screen memory they point to this list of pointers which is right here and so far it only has two things in the list it has um, this one which is um, which is still pointing to tail P is still pointing to the original location and then it has this one which was then added and it also has these because we because we moved before and um, let's see and it doesn't clear a reset doesn't completely clear memory and so uh, yeah so that's okay looks like though might have got into some kind of weird loop I don't know not sure what was going on there let's fill well, actually, I'd. Yeah, let's go ahead and fill. Let's see, this went from 2000 to 27FF, I believe, is what we decided to use. I'm just going to fill that with zeros. Make it a little easier to see what's going on here. Um, yeah, okay. So then let's start the program over. Let's reset. And start over. Alright, I'm going to move once to the left. Okay, so now we see the original location that was first added to, that was first pushed on this pointer list, and then we see the next location because I just moved less, I just moved left. So we went from 600 down to 5FF, and if I move left again, we get the next location added to the list, 05FE. Now if we check at B0, we see tail P is still pointing to 2000 which is still pointing to 600 on the screen that's what we want and head P is pointing to 2004 which is pointing to the current head location that all appears to be working um, okay so let's go I've always been going left here let's go up one okay that didn't complain so let's check again. Those look good. And also, these things are working. More bodies now down to two. Length is up to four. Okay. Um, and now the latest move took us to 5D6. So now we have four pointers in the list pointing to the four locations of the of the worm from the original location which tail P is still pointing to to the current head location which head P is pointing to okay let's go left again okay so now once again tail P is still pointing to 2000 which is what we want head P is pointing to 2008 and here's 2008 so there's our current head P location tail P is still pointing there and now it's gonna crash when I move one more time apparently no it didn't the thing I just said didn't fix it maybe it fixed it not nah, couldn't have um, 
Let's see. Maybe I maybe I need to go one more before it dies. Okay. We still have tail P pointing to zero. Or we still have tail P pointing to two thousand. We still have head now we have head P pointing to twenty zero zero. Now more body is down to zero. Okay, I think it's just we just have an off by one error as far as more body goes that since I started it at five it's actually not going to stop adding body until it gets down to zero, so it's actually going to do it six times just because of the, the order I put things in. Um, length is now up to six, so length is correct. More body needs to be done. More body is going to have to be tweaked one. Um, basically, no, I guess that's correct. I gave more body five, which means five more than one, which is what it started out with. That actually makes sense. Okay. I was thinking it was only going to let it get up to five, but it's going to let it get up to six. Um, so now is when it's going to crash. Okay, and it did. So now let's see what we got. Okay, tail P got incremented correctly. Head P got incremented correctly again. More body is still zero, which is what it should be. Length is still six, which is what it should be. So let's check 2000. Tail P moved up to here, which is correct. Um, head P is now pointing to here, which seems yeah, which seems correct. Um, at that time, I got an out of data error and not the other thing that we got, an undef or whatever it was. Hmm. Interesting. Um, everything it's doing it seems to be doing right so the question is what's what's crashing it um, the new stuff that we added is all is all working right Sometimes, I don't, I don't know if it makes any difference, but sometimes it seems like it makes a difference if you run it from the built-in monitor. Hmm, it still doesn't want to go and let me move. So something... Got to load. Um, yeah. Why is it not letting me do anything? Suddenly it's not accepting my key presses. And I don't know why. bank thing. Um, running this before, I'm surprised I hadn't already fixed it, but um, when you um, 
the banks on the I'll, I'll have to go into more detail in a video sometime on the banks but in the Commodore 128 you can have different things banked in or out of memory um, you can have just RAM or you can have different um, IO in different places ROMs banked into different places and apparently um, I need to bank in the correct stuff so let's just sit, let's just put that at the beginning here Load a zero store that into ff00 that will set up the um, that'll set up the bank that has the stuff we need because apparently it wasn't picking up my I don't know it must have I got into the wrong bank somehow probably one of the times it crashed it switched banks and uh, that should fix that um, all right so let's let's get a fresh start here a hard reset is basically a power cycle on the on the virtual machine um, okay All right, still breaks. It's still somehow winding up in bank one at location 16 in bank one, which is really weird. Um, okay, but now we got a better idea what's going on. All right, so let's look at here. Okay, so this is our new stuff. The stuff with the pluses off to the left, thanks to. Um, what is git gutter git gutter is an emacs mode that shows this shows what you've changed until you commit it um, so for some reason when it gets here does this stuff that's when it's having trouble even though all this stuff seemed to work correctly TLP did get moved up. I mean, everything, all our pointers and everything seemed to work correctly. It wasn't that that was, it's not that that's having the trouble. Um, it's somewhere else after that, apparently. Ooh, here's the issue. We've got a branch if not equal plus here, and where the heck is the plus? Uh, yeah, that's a problem. Okay, that's that's on me because I copied this chunk of I copied this chunk of code. That's the sort of thing that can happen when you're copying and pasting code. I didn't notice that there are branches in this chunk of code that go to this plus right here. Since I'm doing the same thing down here, I need to have a plus after all that business is done. Now, let me see if I Okay, so after working out the new head P, that's where we're branching ahead to. So there's going to be a store, there's going to be a load A20, store A at P plus one. Right here this is where we're branching ahead to. So I need to put the plus right there because this business here all has to do with just moving tail P up two bytes, incrementing tail P, wrapping it if necessary, and then we actually work with tail P right here. So we just needed to branch ahead. So that was probably branching ahead to down here, which is going to crash things all over the place. All right, that explains that. 
so that is what you call a sloppiness error a sloppiness bug um, which can happen uh, let's reset now that's the fun of watching me do this in real time I guess you get to see that kind of mistake um, so that way you know you're not the only one that makes them. Maybe I'm the only one that makes them. Um, Alright, here we go. So now our worm is moving along. And the tail is being deleted behind it just as you want. Awesome. Okay, so... We spent, what, 10 minutes actually programming that and then 20 minutes finding the bug. Um, yeah, that's how it goes. So, let's go back to our code. And let's go back to our org file. So we got this business done, the more body part. Um, now we need to deal with what if we run into a number? What are we gonna do with that number? Actually, one other thing we need to deal with while I'm still thinking about it. When we increment length right here, we may, because remember length is a 16-bit number. So if incrementing length makes it a zero, then we need to increment length plus one. And if you're saying, hey, you made the mistake again, dummy, um, we need a plus plus because we don't want to interfere with these with this plus this branch um, and so that will go there okay so we want to increment length if it rolled over we want to increment the high byte of length so our worm can get over 255 sections long that's all that that's all that's about I think it's okay to have a plus plus inside a plus. I don't think there's an issue with that. Um, if there is, we will find out, I'm sure. Okay. So now the next question is, how about when we, when we run into a number? Okay. Well, we have our collision routine somewhere which handles running into right now it just handles running into um, the body of the worm or the edge of the screen um, otherwise it just continues on um, and so we need to add what happens if we run into a number um, let's see Now, basically, there are three things that the worm, that the head can run into. It can run into the body. It can run into a star, meaning the edge of the screen. It can run into a number. But if you think about it, it can also run into an empty space. So there's really four possibilities. We've already we've covered two of them here, and we're letting the third one, an empty space, just fall through. So. I think what we're going to do is we're also going to compare to a space and let that fall through and then if it's not a body character, it's not an edge character, it's not a space, then we know it's a number because that's our only other possibility unless we start adding cherries or something like a Pac-Man game. Um, if we do, we'll, we'll deal with that then. Um, and so comparing to edge character, no, I got to do that here if it compares to edge character we jump to end of game same thing with body character and so right here we want to compare to space 
and let's see if it is a space then we just want to return because we have no collision so let's branch if not equal to space ahead and then return and then right here is where we'll put the numbers so let's just make sure this is all still makes sense logically we compare it to the body character if it's not a body character we jump ahead to the next compare if it is a body character we jump to end game which we, we haven't really developed yet that's just a break for right now then we compare it to edge character do the same thing if it's equal we jump to end game otherwise we go to the next compare compare to space if it's not equal to a space we branch ahead to here otherwise we return we don't want to jump to end game because the space is fine we just don't want to do anything because there's no collision to handle so right here then is where we'll deal with the number all right so we have the number in a but the number is not it's not the number it's the screen representation of the number which is 30 more well 30 in hexadecimal it's 30 more than the, the actual value of the number um, we'll see that somewhere here uh, I thought we would Let's see when we print the number I don't remember what yeah place a num okay um, okay it's 31 more sorry it's 31 more than is that right? I guess it is. It's that doesn't seem right, but we'll we will find out. Um, oh no, no, no! Sorry, it is thirty more. What what we're doing right here is we find a number from zero through seven, and we want to put a number one through eight on the screen, and so we're adding thirty-one. So zero becomes one, becomes the screen value for one, which is 31. Seven becomes 38, which is a screen value for eight. So um, yeah, I was, I guess I was right the first time. It's 30 more. Um, okay, so let's go back to our collision routine. So the first thing we have to do is subtract, set the carry and subtract 30 hexadecimal get number value of number okay give number value of number character in other words so you've got a character on the screen which right now is six that's represented as 36 in hexadecimal so we want to subtract the 30 to get the actual six and then we want to store that into more body okay because yeah that makes sense um, but we're gonna have to we have to think about the timing on this here in a bit um, because when does collision get called okay collision gets called first thing before we print the head character so or before we move any pointers collision gets called right away so if we store six let's say into more body then yeah okay that's good because we want it in other words we want it to immediately start letting the worm get longer so at this point let's see yeah yeah that makes sense so in other words that as soon as you move on to the six the tail is not going to extend that turn or sorry the tail is not going to disappear that turn the tail is going to extend that turn um, which I think that's I think that's what you want you could you know you could move collision down but I think that that could cause other problems so um, we'll just keep it where it is I think that makes the most sense 
so that stores into more body now we don't want to increase length yet because our worm hasn't actually gotten longer yet it's going to get longer as we continue to move um, so I think that is all we have to do oh. and then we need to make a new number because now we've used up the number that's on the screen we've got to create a new number out there somewhere and so what is our routine for that place a num so now we need to call place a num to start a new to start a new number out there somewhere okay now that seems like it wasn't that much to do and so it seems like that should not work right away but let's find out alright now I want to move towards the one okay it ate, it ate the one and the worm got longer I don't know if I, I was probably going too fast to notice, but the worm is now seven long, so it didn't, you know, it didn't drop the tail on that last move. And so now when I move down, okay, we're still seven sections long. Now if I move up, let's see, move up, go over to the four. Okay, it didn't, it didn't shrink that time. If I go up three more. See, it keeps getting longer. Now when I move, it should shorten. Or not shorten, but it should drop the tail. Okay. Keep going up. Go across. So as soon as I hit the 7, so when I hit the 7, that's going to keep the worm from, it's going to keep the tail from dropping off. Okay, and now it'll go 6 more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, the, now when I hit this, the 7 is used up and so it starts pulling the tail in again. Okay. There's an 8. And so you can see every time you hit a number, it allows the tail to extend by putting that value in more body. buzz around here okay now if we look it's working so let's look at our pointers um, head P is now pointing to 219 C so remember our list of pointers that goes from 2000 to 27 FF we're up to in that in that list we're up to 21 9c so apparently it's apparently it passed the first um, page boundary just fine so head P has gotten up to 20 21 9c tail P is running behind it somewhat at 21 4 2 and so those two are the head and tail pointers into our pointer list and they're moving along through it as you as you expect them to do um, one issue as far as testing goes, and I'm probably not going to do it right now because it would take a while to get there, but one issue is going to be what happens when you get to the end of that, what happens when you get to 27FF, we need to test it and make sure that it rolls over correctly back to 2000. It should do that um, because we have, that's this that's this business right here, that's this code that if you when you increment the head P high value if it goes to 28 you set it back to 20 and you're good um, same thing with tail P right down here so that should work but like I said it's, it's one of those things we'll need to test alright so our worm is able to get longer now that's good news and our numbers show up are working correctly um, So So that all is good. Um
let's let's look at something. Um, let's look at those pointers again. Okay, length is up to four eight, which is um, in uh, people people numbers. That's seventy two. 64 plus 8, 72, so it should be 72 long. I'm not going to count it on the screen. Let's just trust that it's 72 long. Our head head P is up to 2284, so we're continuing. And, you know, tail P is 21 F6, so we're continuing to walk through our pointer list. More body right now is 0, so um, all those things are, are what they should be. Um, I guess to... To do a little, I guess to test it, you always have to exit the monitor to start using it again. I always forget that. Um, uh oh, it's gonna be hard to get to. No, it won't. it'll be out of the way. Um, I guess to test it, I almost have to sit here and just run around for a while because we need to know that it wraps around and we also need to know that it handles length getting larger than 255 um, which I'm nowhere close to yet I can't just hold down the key that's something we're gonna have to work on to be able to just hold down the key and go um, Right now, I have to keep hitting it just because of the way that the way our key detection routine works. It seems like the um, ooh, that's a bad spot. It seems like the random number showing up wherever thing is working pretty well. We're getting numbers all over the screen, and they're showing up random, different. You know, we're not just getting fives or something like that. Um, Let's take another look at where things are currently. Okay, we're up to 25. We're better than halfway there. I want to get up to I want to get up to 27 FF and have it wrap around. That's basically what I'm doing here, just piddling around. Um, so that's going to be another. There, each page is 256 bytes, so each page can hold 128 pointers. So I've got to go another another. Um, I don't know, maybe 300 taps on the keyboard here. I'll just keep running around. Watch me, watch me run into something and end the game prematurely. That's liable to happen. Um, down, down. I've got to circle back to get some space here. One thing I want to do right now while I'm thinking about it is switch the head and body characters. Make this one 0F. And make this one 51. Let the head be the bigger O and let the body character be the smaller circle. Um, we might we might do some custom characters later for it, but we'll um, for now. I just wanted to do that while I was thinking about it. It'll, it'll take effect next time we assemble. Um, all right, let's check again. Ooh, 2788 is what we're up to, so we're getting close to... Um, close to the end of our pointer list space. I just want to make sure it rolls over as it should. Twenty-seven EA. Okay. Um EC E E F zero F two F four F6, F8, FA, FC, FE. Let's check it now. All right, so we've got the head pointer up to 27 FE. 
So now if I hit it one more time, it should wrap around to 2,000. And there it is. Okay, so it wrapped around without any trouble. And uh, the thing is that if you look at 2,000, you know, this, this space in here now is full of the previous pointers that are no longer you know, representing anything and that's fine because it's just going to keep replacing them. It's it's going to, you know, the next time I move it's going to change this one into wherever I move to and it, these, these others don't matter so we don't need to clear them or anything they're just they're just um, left behind junk values is all they are so um, let's see I could keep, well that's probably enough enough of that boringness. I, the tail P math is exactly the same, so since head P wraps around, tail P should wrap around without any trouble. Um, we'll test it eventually, but I'm not going to make you sit here while I tap another couple hundred times. Um, all right, so we are checking for collisions with a number. That's done. We know how to put a... We running into the number grows your worm that works creates a new number that's done we're not displaying a score we probably won't display a score during the game because there's no place to display it we'd have to make the board smaller and it's already pretty small so uh, we'll probably just display a score after the game is over so we still have to get from that um, make the body of the worm a different character we did that I wouldn't mind still finding a better or making let's say make custom head body characters we could do that um, I'd still like to come up with better a better color combination just because I mean this is this is the default Commodore 128 screen and it's fine I think it's it was actually a pretty pleasant color combination just to look at um, but I don't know if it necessarily shows up really well in a video um, again no, nobody's complained about it but um, might want to tinker with that and it's a chance playing with the colors is a chance to um, show some registers because you, you do all that through Vic registers all right so we did all that stuff I guess the next time what we'll have to work on is um, basically those things that are unchecked um, we need to display a score at the end um, instead of just breaking out so we've, we've got to add to the end game routine build that into a real thing um, maybe we'll play with custom characters a little bit um, that could be interesting and just sort of kind of clean it up and uh, make sure it all works um, oh sorry here's a big one improve the keyboard because allow holding down the key and also the other thing in, in the worm program on FreeBSD and I think on most systems if you don't press a key within a certain amount of time it goes ahead the worm goes ahead and moves in the direction you were moving so that you can't just sit like I'm sitting now and just sit there and think about it you have to it, it, it's not a real fast thing it doesn't force you to like you know it's it's not a fast-paced game but it's like a, a second or goes by let's say and you haven't pressed anything yet it goes ahead and moves one spot and so we need to work that into it and that's going to be interesting because we're going to have to deal with interrupts we're going to have to have a timer um, because right now when it waits for a key it'll just wait forever it's just sitting there waiting for that key so we're going to have to have an inter we're going to have to basically watch the clock at the same time and say if a second has gone by stop waiting and that means we're going to have to keep track of the last key press um, so that's something we'll need to add so that if you haven't if you didn't press a key and it got tired of waiting for you it goes ahead and just presses the last key again for you is uh pretty much what's how that's going to work so we're going to have we're going to have an interrupt routine um, which will be interesting an interesting thing to add 
Um, so, um, what do I call that? Let's say auto key press if you're too slow. Uses the last key pressed. Okay. So I think we don't need to. We don't. We didn't really have a problem with the randomness. Um, we took care of that stuff. So next time, see notes below. Unchecked. Nice thing about doing this stuff in org mode is you have all this built-in stuff like checkboxes and and uh, outlining and so on. So um, that's what we'll be working on. And we don't need this anymore. Well, I'll leave that because that way it'll end up in the repository. Um, so save that. And now we need to stage our changes. I haven't been showing this. Um, which is was neglecting a, a part of it, I guess. But um, I am keeping track of all this in a Git repository that I push up up to GitLab. Um, and so we stage the changes, commit them, added tail and longening. That's pretty much what we did this time, right? We added the tail and longening code, which is uh, um, a made-up word, obviously. Um, and that took care of the more body stuff, took care of the collisions with the numbers. That's all part of that. So that's what we'll just call that. It'll be our note, our commit note. Control-C, Control-C to do that. Then we just can capital P to push it. I'm using Magit or Maggot. I don't know. People say it different ways, but... Um, it's a git, uh, I guess they call it a porcelain, um, but it's a, it's an Emacs mode for git that allows you to do all the git stuff from within Emacs, and so you can just push it, and it'll come back and tell me it's pushed. So um, these untracked ones are the next project after the worm program is done, so I'm getting ready for that. So that'll be it this time, I guess. Um, got quite a bit done that time I think it seems like only one thing but it was kind of a big deal to um, make sure the tail pointer worked make sure that we adjust it as as the worm moves along um, make sure the collisions with the numbers work um, and so I think we're pretty close to done we can probably finish this up next time we will have to add sort of a wrapper around it to say if somebody actually wants to play this they don't want to have to load it into their monitor and say you know, go to 1300. You want to probably what we're going to want to do is well, anyway, we'll get into that next time. But most most games on the Commodore are set up so that you can just load it and it runs, and that's probably what we're going to want to do, which will just mean wrapping it in a little bit of code that does that. So, anyway, we'll get to that the next time or the time after that. This will be one or two more videos, I imagine. So. I think that's it. So I hope this was interesting and I thank you for watching.